Hey, hello there. This is an abbreviated tutorial for making Skype axes with Blender. So, in the scene I have set up right here, I've already completed a skybox that took quite a while to render, but you can make simpler skyboxes using a technique I'm going to show you. Start by opening up a new file. An important thing to do when you're setting up the scene for making a skybox is to center the camera at the origin. If you press the N key, you can bring up this transform dialog on the side, and that'll tell you where the location and rotation of the camera are at. Set all of it to zero except for the X rotation of the camera. Go to the camera options, change the uh, lens uh, unit to field of view and change that to 90 degrees. This is important for making a skybox that works. Now if you look at from the top down, you can see that if I rotated or duplicated this camera four times, I can get a full 360 degree um, coverage of whatever scene we're rendering. Like that. So if I rotate this camera 90 degrees each time I make a square render, then it should come out with a good skybox. But first, make sure that the resolution is a square picture. So if you have, you only need one cam for this, by the way. So set this to a uh, good standard is 1024 by 1024. Now you can do front, back, left, right, up and down, and it'll all fit into a full 360 degree globe, which is important for making skyboxes. Now, uh, obviously you need something in the scene because you don't just want a, a blank gray canvas for whatever uh, skybox you're setting. So for this simple tutorial, I'll do some very basic shapes, but in the advanced tutorial, I'll show you how to do oceans and clouds and other stuff like that. Perspective of the camera now. Go into the camera perspective and rotate it around on the z-axis to see uh, how well each of the objects you place in your scene will appear. If they're too close, then the, it'll be very obvious when you're playing like a game like Half-Life or Team Fortress 2. And just to make this a little bit easier, get rid of the Get rid of the uh, default lamp, uh, change it to a sun, and in the sun tab, add a sky and uh, set it to mountain because mountain is good. And you can rotate or uh, adjust the orientation of the sun as you please. doesn't matter where the scene is, it is, but I'd like to see how it's about to hit the object. Next. Now if you go into texture view, you will sh you should be able to see uh, which sides of the cubes will be lit up when we eventually render the scene. And if you change this to uh, the viewport shading to render, you can see a preview of what you're going to see. Now skyboxes are usually made up of six images that are all squares, so let's do that real quick. Um, start with uh, 90 degrees and zero on the Z so you can keep your front facing straight. And render the first image. Okay, this scene was very basic and it didn't take very long at all to do. But it's at half resolution, so I'll do that again. 
Okay, so this will be our first image. We'll set this to be the front one. So let's just say sky front. Okay. Now if this is the front facing, uh, and we rotate it 90 degrees on the Z, This should now be the left image. Render that. And then rotate it another 90 degrees. This will be the back image. Another 90 degree rotation, and this will give us our right in. It's good to use relative directions for these things because you'll always know where front is in relation to back and where left is compared to right, whereas north, south, east, and west is more of a cardinal direction that can be dependent on whatever program you're using. Now reset the rotation back to zero and set the X rotation to a 180. Now you should be looking straight up. The reason I added a sun is that you can see the uh, sprite up there, and that's uh, that helps with, you know, a good skybox should have some uh, landmarks, basically, to, you know, We're just using this for, you know, simple. Okay, now set the rotation on the X to zero and it should be looking straight down. Yeah. All right, now we have six images and depending on what program you're using, you either need to stitch them together in a certain order or save them as individual files. But what I can do for Blender, which is a simpler sort of, you know, if you want to render a very uh, complex scene, it sometimes saves you, you know, pr precious processing power to have a skybox already pre-rendered and then have your objects in a scene with a box around it, rather than having, you know, uh, in my advanced tutorial, there'll be clouds and an ocean and there's a lot of refraction and stuff that goes on there and uh, it can get quite expensive the more you add. So what I'm gonna do now is delete everything in the scene, which is just press A on your keyboard and you can hit X and it'll ask you if you wanna delete everything and you can. Set the 3D cursor, uh, which you can open again with uh, the N key over here. Set that to zero and add one more cube, or a new cube at least. Now, for now, you can keep it small. And what I like to do is use the uh, UV editing mode and turn off transparency. And then if you open the N uh, dialog, you can go into shading and add textured solids. So you'll be able to see when you apply an image to face on this object. Let's start with the front. We'll set this face, the one that uh, faces the Y towards the cursor. That'll be our front face. Press U to unwrap. It'll be a square over here. All right. Now, as you can see, it's upside down. So if you're in the UV, uh, press the R key and rotate it 180. And you'll see it on the face of this cube. This isn't important now, but it's good to have, you know, skyboxes are usually around you, not in front of you, so. But it's good to build it this way so that when you invert it, it's all one piece and it works properly and everything's got the, the um, well, you'll see. Okay, so if this is the front one, we'll do the next one as the left one, which is, yes, that's the okay. Unwrap, open the image that you have saved. As you can see, 
these aren't uh, these aren't seam the seams on this image are not lining up. So I'm gonna rotate the UV for that. Oh, something else is wrong. Hmm. That's the front. I'll figure it out later. Anyways, just get all your images on there somehow. Did I flip my lefts and my rights? Probably. We'll see when I add the back. Front and back should not be wrong. Just the left and right. Right. Uh, it looks like I did. Okay, so left is right and right is left. Whoopsie. Because it shouldn't be inverted or wrong. So I screwed up with my naming convention, but it's nothing you can't fix very quickly. Okay, so now these should all be somewhat coherent. Add the top one. I think I need to rotate this a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Then the bottom image. Whoops. And if you want this to be uh, a lot more easy to read, you can set this to textured mode. And it should be shadeless if there's no uh, no light source in the scene, or you can hit this the shadeless thing here and it'll do it for you. Okay, so now we have our skybox with all of its textures applied, but it's too small. And it's not around us, it's in front of us. So go back to the default view. And in default, you can set your shading to have textures, if you'd like. Uh, this is in Blender Render, but I can show uh, later how to do it in Cycles. It's slightly more complicated because each face needs its own texture or some complicated stuff if you want it to be one texture. But for the Blender Renders, add a new texture, make sure the face textures are being applied in the Options tab, and set the emission to 1. A setting the emission to one should make it like a uh, full bright, no matter, there won't be any shading on the cube based on the world. It's kind of like how Half-Life applies skybox textures in that uh, there's no shading on them and they're all uh, just textures projected in the cube. So we have our cube and it's emitting. And if we do a preview render, you should see that uh, it is full bright, even though there's no lamp in the scene and it would normally be dark. For instance, if I set the shading to zero, zero. Yep, it's black, okay. So shading is uh, off and it's being emitted, but it's too small and we want it to be around us. So we can scale this up a couple hundred times or if you just wanna be, for this I'll do 50. Turn off auth ortho group view, so. Add a new camera. Set the view to texture. I'm gonna turn off the grid floor to make sure everything is looking how it should. Okay. So that's a skybox right there. But as you can, if you can tell, there's these little, you can barely see it, but there's some seams here and you can fix that in a number of ways. But uh, the way I do it is probably not the best, but it works. So, you can set the UV image to constrain it to the image bounds, scale it up as high as you can, and then scale it to 0.999. And you can see that down there when I did that. And if you do this for all of the images inside the cube, the seam should be a little bit better. Okay, now 
now the seams are okay, but you know, you can open up this uh, file in Photoshop or, or all the images in Photoshop and try and clean it up that way. Or when you're doing the original uh, 1024 render, you can add a little bit of uh, a margin by one pixel and then resize it or crop it out for two pixels so that uh, you get a nice clean image when you put it into whatever game. So now that we've got this skybox, let's see if we can get more than one image into one render. You can add a new camera and put it at the origin, because in most games, uh, if you're doing a skybox, it will have the skybox at the origin, like uh, projected from an origin of the map, and it will be centered on the player. Although in Half-Life's case, there's some movement depending on how far you go with the, the uh, transformation on your character. Okay, so let's make this a panoramic with 110 degrees of view. And we'll make it 19 or 1920 by 1080. It's a weird looking panorama, uh, but there's no scene. Um, let's see, let's try off the graphic. Uh, as I expected. Okay, that's good, perspective. Now it looks like one image here, but it's actually, you can see at least four or maybe even six. Let me put it in, yep. You can see three images in that, and there's a seam here where the cube splits it up. If you still have seams, you can adjust your anti-aliasing options to be higher, or if it's in a video game, I don't know. But that's your abbreviated skyboxing tutorial.